Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming here and uh, terribly sorry for these technical difficulties. So uh, my name is Vova. I'm head of community at SmartCats, and today we will be talking about social media. Uh, our guest today is Simon Akramev. Hi, Simon. Hello. Simon is the creator of uh, SuccessfulFreelanceTranslator.com. He's also the admin uh, and the creator of the uh, Facebook group with the same name, and he is also mentoring and coaching translators to become better marketers. Is that correct, Simon? Yes, it's correct. At least I am trying to. <laughs> okay. So uh, before we give the mic to Simon, I just want to introduce you to the place where we are gathered now. So this course is brought to you by SmartGet Academy. SmartGet Academy is an endeavor to bring together the best courses and webinars for translators and translation teams. It is brought to you by SmartGet. If you haven't ever heard of SmartGet, it is a web platform for translators that lets you translate in a more convenient, enjoyable, um, and hassle-free way. And it also lets you get new customer orders on the platform. If you want to check it out, you can see the button under the under the video box. So check it out when you have time. And before I give the mic to Simon, I want to tell a few words about this platform, Crowdcast. To the right, of course, you can see the chat where you are already chatting. Uh, you can say hi to everyone there. We will be following it throughout the webinar, maybe not too closely. Also, if you have any questions to Simon, you can ask them on the left, where is the tab questions and topics. And I will also thank you for answering the polls in the polls tab so we can know uh, how to better tune this webinar to you. So um, that's it. And now I'm giving the mic to Simon. So Simon, what are you going to tell us today? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, as well, already introduced me. My name is Simon. Uh, I'm English-Russian translator. I have been in translation since 2007. It's uh, more than nine years already. Uh, and I started freelancing at the same time uh, in 2007. Then I shifted back to uh, freelancing after uh, spending four years in a mining company as a full house, as an in-house uh, full-time translator. Uh, and uh, since 2013, uh, I'm trying to promote my translation services for the foreign markets, to the, uh, to the foreign markets. Um, so since that time, since 2013, uh, I, I tried to learn as much as I could about um, online marketing. I read a lot of blogs. Uh, I passed several marketing courses, uh, both online and uh, offline. And I also launched uh, several websites, business websites to sell translation services online. Currently, I have two of them, one for the local uh, for the local market in the Russian language and one uh, for the foreign market in the English language. Um, actually, uh, my first website uh, was, was absolutely unsuccessful. I couldn't get anything from it, but it was uh, a great experience since uh, I understood how to, uh, how to promote websites, how to build them right, uh, and uh, what, what to do, where to start with uh, online promotion. Um, I, I was determined to succeed with the online business and I promised myself that I would learn how to earn money on translation using uh, websites and using, using social networks. Uh, and gradually I developed a kind of strategy uh, for my translation business uh, that actually works. Uh, so uh, as Vova already told us, uh, you may be, you, probably you already know me from <clears throat> Uh, from my website, SuccessfulFreelanceTranslator.com, uh, or maybe from, from Facebook group. Uh, and um, probably that's enough with the intro. I don't want you to get bored. Um, let's go to the, uh, to the direct topic of our webinar. Today we are going to talk about social networks, social media for translators, uh, and we are going to structure the webinar as follows. Uh, Vladimir will, will ask me about uh, about social media, we have several uh, several questions that I have prepared for you, and uh, I also took uh, around six or seven questions uh, from the poll tab and questions and topics. So uh, we will start with the strategy and then go straight to the questions, your questions. So please, Moan, the first question. Oh, can't hear you. 
It seems to me that you have yeah, I, on I, yeah, I have turned on the mic. Sorry. The mic. So, uh, so uh, 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 ask first, uh, what social what? networks will be covered during this webinar? Mm -hmm. uh, as you may know, there are more than 200 social networks on the web. Uh, and you actually can find a social network for anything. Um, I won't be surprised if uh, uh, one time I'll find the social network for spaghetti lovers or something like this. <laughs> Uh, but uh, today we are going to focus our attention uh, on uh, three main social networks that I use uh, for my marketing purposes. They are LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, and uh, why we are going to use exactly these uh, three social networks? We are targeting at uh, adult users who are capable of paying for translation services. Uh, why I'm using uh, exactly this definition. You should narrow down your efforts to find your customers on the web. And uh, the first steps, uh, the first step you should, uh, at the first step you should separate those people who are not interested in translation at all and uh, those people who cannot afford and or who don't want to spend money for translation. Like this. And, and um, uh, I was just going to ask, what is in general the purpose of social media? Uh, how does mm -hmm. um, uh, I would like to make a, uh, a short survey. Probably our visitors can type their uh, own answers. Just one word, or maybe two words. Uh, what do you think? What's the purpose of social media? Uh, I don't I think we can. Okay, we, you can write in the chat, guys. So go to the chat and write what you think the purpose of social media is. Just one word. What, what do you think? What's the purpose? Let's try to... to to see what our visitors think about it. Okay, already two, two oh, answers so there. So many answers, thank you. Marketing, connecting, reaching Are out. Are you counting? Network. Because I'm not. Connecting, having, having a reputation, promoting. Uh, and it seems to me that all of you are right. Entertainment also, yes. Entertainment, interaction, promotion, information. That's right. Um, I think that the main purpose of the social media is to Tell people that you exist, actually, that your business actually exists. Yes, yeah, so the main purpose is to communicate and to distribute information uh, across the web. Uh, but the true potential of social media is spreads far beyond marketing and selling. You can also uh, learn new things, uh, acquire new skills, connect with people uh, you could never meet before in real life. Uh, and uh, share valuable information with your users, with your potential customers, to resolve their problems. Therefore, the first and the main purpose of social media marketing uh, is to let people know about your existence. Nothing more, nothing less. Like this. Interesting. Interesting. Um, um, so what, so what, what comes what, out if you know about your existence? About your existence. What, what, what comes next? And how do you actually make something useful of it? How do you develop a strategy to do so? Yes, I, uh, I will try to gradually go to this part. Uh, people use social media as a, as a source of information. Uh, and no one used them just to look at a beautiful ad. Uh, okay. And I can say that ads is a kind of inevitable evil. Uh, therefore, in the first instance, we should use social media as a tool to share valuable information that can be helpful for our potential clients. Uh, this approach is called inbound marketing. So this is when you help your potential clients find you. You shall try to lead the prospect through the sales funnel. That in our case starts on social media where customers find a, a content that seems to answer their questions. And ideally, this sales funnel ends on your website where your potential customers fill in the uh, order form and uh, uh, actually uh, ask for a quote or something like this. Uh, this sales funnel can be reduced to the social media only. Uh, it's just an ideal case without any intermediaries. When your customer finds relevant information on Facebook, on Twitter and LinkedIn and uh, uh, through your business page or through a profile contacts with you directly, send you a message and ask for translation. Uh, and this is the first approach. And the second approach is called outbound marketing. Uh, the main purpose of outbound marketing is to reach out to your potential clients without waiting uh, when they find you. Uh, and now there is another question. Uh, what can you do to help customers find you uh, and to reach, to reach them on the social media? 
and uh, probably that's time to go to the presentation. Okay, I guess you can screen the share and I can pop, pop out from it. Mm -hmm. Not to take too much space after you do. Guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them on the left. It will be much easier to notice them than in the chat. But of course, you can also discuss things in the chat if you wish. Mm -hmm. Oh, we see an yeah. infinite line. Okay. You can switch me, switch yeah. my video open just, yes, like this. Okay. Uh, I hope everybody can see it. So, uh, social media for translators. So, how can we use social media uh, to contact our uh, potential customers and how to spread information? At first, we can and we should create business page or a profile on Facebook, on Twitter, or on LinkedIn. Then we should regularly publish content, relevant, interesting, uh, valuable, helpful content. Then we should repost content from other resources because it's impossible to create um, to create enough content uh, on your own without using uh, the third party resources. Then you should like and follow the pages of your potential clients, like their posts, publish comments. Uh, you should you should also uh, connect with other translators, with your colleagues and for, uh, and uh, mates. Uh, according to the statistics uh, I have prepared for one of my posts uh, last year, I've contacted several uh, leading translators from the industry, and I found out that uh, the major part of translation work, about 25 percent, come comes from uh, from translators, not from direct clients, from your mates. Then you should also connect with industry leaders. Try to identify those who, who are doing really great things on the web. Uh, in our case, you can contact, uh, for instance, uh, Tess Wittin. Probably you know this. Uh, she, she has a podcast called uh, Marketing Tips for Translators. Uh, or maybe Marta. She, uh, she has a business school for translators. One to words. Uh, I think you, you, if you type in the lead leaders in the translation industry, leader bloggers, you will find them. And also, you should uh, join specialized groups. Uh, for instance, uh, the group for translators that I'm leading, successful freelance translators, uh, where you can meet and collaborate with other, with other translators, with your colleagues, uh, to share your opinion, learn something new. Also, you should take active part uh, in the group activities, uh, this, in, in discussions, polls, uh, and uh, other content shared by, uh, by fellow translators in, in such groups like this. Uh, and mainly, the key to success on social media is simple. You should create a plan and consistently follow it. Uh, to do that, you need a, a kind of strategy. Uh, and uh, this strategy is the main uh, topic of our webinar. So, uh, Vova, we can proceed to the next question. So, it seems to me that Vova yeah, sorry, I was just too engaged in, in the chat. That's why I lost these buttons. Let me let me find myself first. So can we uh, switch off the presentation for now? Uh, no, we just uh, you can read the next question on, on oh, the okay. strategy. So Please. you reveal, reveal that I have a list of questions here, but OK. So uh, it's actually a logical question, because I guess you cannot see me. But anyway, uh, I, I hope. Oh, OK, here am I. So, um, how many social networks do you need? Because it's hard to get a grip of all of them altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, there is no direct direct answer for this question. Some marketers suggest to use as many networks as you can to cover a large audience. Others suggest to focus only on one social networks. However, I I would recommend to start with four networks. Oh my God, my cat is coming here. <laughs> Smart <laughs> um, I would suggest to start with four main networks, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, Google+. Uh, and then you can identify the best channels uh, using the uh, strategy which we are going to discuss after this question. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so we, if you are ready to talk about the strategy, let's, let's, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So developing social media marketing strategy. Uh, so developing a comprehensive strategy is a dynamic process. 
That means that your strategy shall be flexible and alterable depending on current conditions. Uh, my overall marketing strategy can be represented in a simple, uh, in a simple cycle and it in includes uh, six steps. The first step is making assumption or analyzing. Uh, the second is planning, the third is taking action, the fourth is analyzing, the next one is selecting, uh, and uh, the last one is implementing. So let's stop on these steps in details. Uh, the first one, making assumption or analyzing. Uh, first, you should identify your target audience. In other words, uh, you have to create a customer profile. Uh, without it, all your efforts will have zero effect. If you don't have clients yet, uh, you can make an assumption. Uh, if you already have some clients, you can analyze uh, the existing clients. Uh, in both cases, you should try to, uh, to find the answer for the following questions. Uh, what is the physical location of your client? Country, state, city. What are they doing? Industry, maybe even uh, a part of, in, of the industry, sub-industry. Or what are they producing? Or maybe they're offering some kind of services. Who are your customers? Uh, their occupation, their position in the company. Uh, I would recommend to try to contact uh, the decision makers, uh, managers, or even head of the companies when you're trying to promote your translation services. Also, you should uh, take into account the age, the gender, and uh, the interest of your clients. Uh, you should also uh, try to identify what kind of category of customers you're going to target. Uh, there are many, uh, many different classifications uh, and categories of clients, but actually there are three of them uh, that I, I have stumbled upon during my uh, career. Uh, the first one are those who need translation and who already has a provider. Uh, this is a very complex category as they already working with some, uh, with some translators or even uh, translation companies, and it is hard to compete with, uh, with them in this case, you should try to uh, ask for a test translation or um, something like this. Then the second category is those people who need translation and are searching for providers. Uh, that's simple. This is the greatest category, and uh, if you manage to grab their attention, uh, they are in your pocket. Uh, and the third one uh, is the most uh, complex category to work with. Uh, it includes those people who doesn't know that they need translation service, but they actually may need it. Uh, you need to uh, open their eyes and uh, make them understand that they need translation. Uh, and also, finally, make you, on the steps on the step of making assumption, you should uh, identify the channels to reach them. And in our case, uh, when we talk about social media marketing, these are social networks like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and maybe some, uh, some other networks. Uh, then we are going to the planning stage. Uh, in simple words, your plan should include the following uh, items. What kind of content you will publish and share on social networks? How will you find and create the content? Uh, how often will you post it? And uh, on which social channels? Uh, after you have finished the plan, you can uh, go directly to taking action. Uh, and actually, you can try to implement this plan, find and create relevant content, relevant content, publish, share it, and engage with prospects and colleagues, as I mentioned above, uh, by liking their uh, pages, joining groups, uh, posting comments, liking and reposting and sharing their posts, and so on. Uh, and uh, after all these steps comes the step of analysis. Analysis uh, helps to identify the productivity of your efforts by channel. And uh, approximately during uh, the first two weeks or maybe the first month of your active social media promotion, you will gather enough data to analyze it and to understand which media channel is working better than others. Uh, there are uh, special tools. Uh, each of uh, each of these three social networks provide special tools to analyze your uh, social efforts. Uh, in case of Facebook, uh, it's Facebook Insights. Uh, you can go to your business page and select uh, Insights tab. Let me show it. 
let me show it here like this so this is my my Facebook page and you can go to inside step and see how my posts performed over the last seven days you can also select 28 days and see which posts are doing better than others uh, engagements reach videos and so on you have a lot of different options to uh, to analyze in this case also uh, when we talk about when we talk about Twitter Twitter also has a special analytical tool uh, let's get back to the browser so here is Twitter click on your profile image and go to analytics here you will also see several metrics like tweets, tweet impressions, profile visits, mentions, followers, and so on. Uh, and the last one uh, is the uh, LinkedIn analytics. Uh, in this case, we have two analytics, uh, one for, for a profile. You can go to profile, uh, who's viewed your profile, and see uh, how many people viewed it. Also, who viewed your posts? This uh, this relates to the posts published uh, directly uh, on LinkedIn, not from not from other blogs. LinkedIn offers a special function uh, for publishing con uh, your content uh, using the interface of LinkedIn. And also, you can find uh, how your profile rank among others. For instance, my rank is top 13 uh, among my connections, among 645 connections in like this. Um, <clears throat> so, and uh, on the on the stage of analyzing, you should uh, pay specific attention uh, to to your channel efficiency. Uh, oh, I, ju I just forgot about one one more thing. You can also use buffer analytics to uh, track activity related to your posts. Uh, we have a question related to social media uh, manager tools, uh, and we'll cover uh, buffer in details later when I will provide some tips and tricks uh, on uh, using this tool. So what, what, what kind of metrics you should track when you analyze your channels? Uh, the first is the number of engagements. Uh, you should look at your, uh, at your anal analytic tool and uh, calculate what, uh, what kind of posts gain the most, uh, the, uh, the most of shares, likes, and retweets. Uh, then you should uh, find the posts uh, that had many comments. Uh, in this case, you should try try to find the topics that stimulate dialogues and the number of clicks. Actually, this is one of the most important uh, metrics. Uh, you can see it on Facebook and probably on Twitter. Uh, how many times visitors came from social media to your website? Uh, and uh, one metric to omit during estimation is the number of followers. Uh, I know that it's uh, really great when you see how, how many uh, people are liking and uh, following your Facebook business page, but actually it is, uh, if you have 1,000 followers, it means nothing without engagement. It is better to have uh, 100 followers who watch your updates, like and share your posts, rather than have 1,000 followers who never interact with your content. Uh, at some point, uh, you will be able to understand if you need a certain channel or not. But before quitting a channel, uh, you should think about the following. It can happen that your assumption was wrong. Uh, I mean the assumption about your uh, clients, uh, about your client's profile. It can be wrong. And you probably you couldn't reach your potential clients using your current approach. Uh, and there are three main reasons why your, ta why your strategy doesn't work. Uh, they include uh, targeting the wrong audience. You, you can try to uh, retarget your efforts to another audience. Then publishing irrelevant content. Probably you're, you're trying to share content that is, that is not interesting for your clients. And also uh, posting at wrong time. Probably uh, your posting time differs from the, uh, from, uh, from the time when, when your clients uh, using social media. Okay. So with just uh, screenshots 
prepared screenshots, but I used, already showed you these things on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And uh, also the last, but one of the most important uh, steps is to refine and repeat. Um, this is very simple. After you analyze your SMM activity, you will be able to identify the most uh, prospective channels. Um, this will help you to uh, identify your target target audience more specifically. Uh, you will you will find the content that people really like. They like to they like it. They share it, uh, and they comment on it. And you should focus exactly on that type of content. Uh, and also, you will find uh, best posting time. Mm, just uh, track at what times you are posting and uh, at what time uh, your posts get better engagement. And uh, that's all with with the presentation. And uh, we can proceed to okay. the other questions that we have. OK, uh, okay I'll, 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 uh, I'll put uh, the presentation. Uh, um, so uh, instead of going to questions, maybe we can also discuss a bit, because um, perhaps in different social media, people are looking for different things. So when you are posting, you must adapt somehow your strategy for different social media. So what is exactly the difference between the four, uh, the, the four networks you mentioned? Okay. Uh, so actually, people are looking for different type of content on different social media. Uh, I have conducted a small survey and also based on my own observations, I can say that uh, on LinkedIn, uh, since this is the audience of professionals, uh, you should think about how, how your piece of content uh, can add value to the professional lives of your audience. Uh, taking, taking this uh, into account, you should prepare the content that will help your audience learn something new and to grow professionally. Try to express uh, those professional benefits in your LinkedIn updates. Uh, on Facebook, the audience is versatile and uh, the audience is looking for entertainment and probably value. Uh, but think about shares first, because shares uh, is everything on Facebook. Uh, what will make your audience want to share, want to share your post? Aim, aim to spark emotions and interests uh, you can use uh, different captions and headlines and try to find the right approach to your target audience. And Twitter, uh, on Twitter, the audience is looking for news, for tips, uh, how-to articles, uh, uh, and what's trending, what's, what's happening in the world. Uh, you should focus your attention on short and eye-catching uh, headlines on Twitter posts. And also use graphics, use images. Always try to use images because uh, images and videos, visual, visual things, they all, all, almost in all times, they attract more attention just, than just a single line of work. Of, uh, of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also notice that. I also have an observation from myself from running the market Twitter account um, that many people actually share the same, more or less the same content. If some article comes out, a lot of people might be sharing it as a curated post. So, mm -hmm. and I uh, noticed that to stand out, a good actually idea is to take some quotes from within the article, the one that you especially like, try to squeeze it into 140 words, which is not always easy, but mm -hmm. uh, when you do so and you put it out, then when people are scrolling through, they catch on it. Because if it's just the name of the article, they can see it twice. For mm -hmm. instance, they can see the name in your tweet and they can also see the name in the, this blurb that is put below. So mm -hmm. I, th I think that a good idea is also to put quotes from the articles you share. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, when you prepare an article, you should uh, spend some time, when you prepare an article for your blog, for your business blog, you should spend some time to create at least 10 headlines, at least 10. It's better to create 20 headlines and select out the best out of them. Uh, and uh, for uh, one article, you mean? Yes, for an article. Uh, yeah. That's also, also what I usually do. I just, you, you, for instance, you can take different quotes from the same article. It yeah. becomes like you show it from different sites. Also helpful and quite easy. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of new questions in the comment section. So do you live in Russia? If so, what do you do in order to reach your LinkedIn page? No, I live in uh, in the Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, it's uh, it's close to Russia. 
but uh, we have no any limitations on internet. We can use almost every website, maybe probably except for the U.S. sites, which are uh, closed only for for U.S. citizens. Uh, so it's not a problem. Also, do you, so Simon, you don't recommend spending money on paid LinkedIn. Uh, actually, I, I don't recommend spending money on LinkedIn and Twitter at all, uh, because uh, if you're depending on your target audience, you will spend much money without any uh, without any sufficient gain. If you are targeting your local audience, <clears throat> for example, I have a, a local website and uh, I pay for uh, Google AdSense. <clears throat> Uh, I also run some uh, paid advertising on Facebook, and it works pretty well. Uh, so, if you if you are targeting only your uh, the city where you live, you can try to spend some uh, some money. But <clears throat> it's impossible to uh, to cover the large audience of, of countries. You 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 won't uh, stand the competition with the large companies. You probably have to specialize to do your interactions in a narrow field. Mm -hmm. So if it's really narrow field, I try to uh, launch uh, a, an uh, advertising campaign on my uh, Google AdSense account uh, for US and uh, UK. Uh, and I targeted um, technical, uh, technical companies with, with websites. At least I tried to. Uh, I, have, I had about... 400 views during uh, the month, and I had only one, uh, only one actual order. It's uh, it's nothing, actually. I I spent around around 100 bucks for this advertising, and uh, I got <clears throat> around 20 bucks or 200 bucks from this order. So it it doesn't work, actually. Well, at least didn't work in your case. Yeah, I think you you gotta be careful with advertising anytime. It's uh, by the way, we have a question that is related to this, how to attract direct clients on Facebook without engaging in paid advertising, have more organic reach. I think it's uh, even a bigger question because how do you actually write or find content that will interest your direct clients and not just your colleagues? Because if you just write about translation, you just get uh, translators read your articles, which is good, but not bring you money right away. Yeah, sure. So. Shall we go to this question? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, there was a question uh, in the question and topics uh, section. How, oh, to okay. <clears throat> how to attract uh, direct clients on Facebook without too much engaging in paid advertising? Have yeah, more exactly. research. Uh, let me be honest. It is not easy to achieve good results on Facebook without uh, paid ads. Uh, it seems to me that uh, this is... Uh, a Facebook policy. They need to uh, make you spend money for for the ads. Uh, they frequently change uh, news news feed algorithms, uh, and the post coverage depends on many factors. It starts from from your location. Uh, it it includes the number of fans on your page. It includes many many other things. Uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> uh, the relevance of your content, the relevance of uh, information provided on your profile, uh, but. Just, just as an example, uh, when you have about 100 or maybe uh, 500 fans on your Facebook business page, uh, each <clears throat> with each uh, post you publish, uh, okay, let, let's say only uh, one third of of your uh, fans they can see your update when you have below 500 uh, fans on your page. As soon as you reach 1,000. <clears throat> the number of fans who could potentially see your uh, your promotional post or just any post from your page will drop down to one one fifth of the uh, of the total number of fans. It means if you have one uh, one uh, thousand, only only about uh, fifty or one hundred people could potentially see your uh, see your post. Uh, and so, if the, the system is really greedy, yes, <laughs> the system is really greedy. Actually, uh, so how can how can you uh, improve that? Uh, the only possible way to increase your organic traffic um, <clears throat> from Facebook, in particular, is to uh, is to post uh, high quality, useful, and engaging content. Uh, you should try to find uh, to analyze your clients, understand what they need, 
and what they may potentially need and prepare relevant content uh, exactly matching their search requests, uh, their uh, needs and their uh, requirements. Um, and uh, also there is a special kind of uh, a kind of scheme how to post your content. Uh, I have recently shared this on Twitter and uh, as far as I remember um, <clears throat> Boa also shared it on Twitter. So uh, as, I, as I already said, uh, no one likes ads. So uh, keep it to the minimum. Uh, if you want to promote your uh, your service page, for example, you have your main page and uh, uh, pages with uh, different services, for example, translation, proofreading, uh, desktop publishing, something else. Uh, you should limit uh, your promotional posts uh, to 20% of your uh, of the overall number of posts. For instance, you have uh, 10 posts to share daily, let's say 10 posts, and only two posts shall be uh, related to your actual services. 60% 60 <clears throat> 60 of your posts shall be curated content because uh, it's really hard to create enough content. You can find uh, other tips and tricks uh, from other translators, from other industries, uh, and to share it, 60%. And 20% shall be your own uh, client, client oriented uh, educational content like blog posts, maybe videos, maybe presentations, infographics, and so on. <clears throat> um, I think um, also, also regarding curated posts, uh, you can actually gain uh, followers from them if you use services such as Sneeply. It's written as sneep.ly. Yeah. So it lets you, when sharing some content, it shows also a pop-up window that includes your call to action. For instance, subscribe to my newsletter about about <clears throat> websites if you are targeting websites localization for instance so this way uh, you can um, almost by doing nothing you can gain uh, gain additional followers and you can track the analytics and so on from my own experience um, the conversion can be a size five percent so just by sharing something and having 1000 views you are getting 50 people who actually looked at this uh, looked at your CTA and clicked through it and uh, I also want to get back a bit uh, with my own observations about how to get more views on Facebook without engaging in advertising. I, I noticed also one interesting uh, peculiarity of Facebook is that the more people like you, the more they see your content in future. So actually, I think it's a good trick, it's what I'm doing with our Facebook page, is to share a lot of maybe funny content, not exactly cats, but something related yeah. to what people may like, but not, not specifically work content, you know, something that is clickbaitful, let's say so. So people click like, and then when you share some useful content, they will also see it because they already liked you in, in the past. And every time someone likes your post, make sure to click on the list of all the people who liked it because there will be a button called invite, which means mm -hmm. invite like your page. For some reason, Facebook doesn't do it automatically. So you, you have to ma if you if 100 people liked your post, you may have to manually click through 1,000 buttons to invite these people to like your page. But that's yeah. really useful because once they like your page, they will see more from you. Yes, uh, there are already special scripts uh, that you can use to uh, to invite those people, but I, I'm not sure if it is uh, if it is legal at all. <laughs> Because Facebook may ban you for using such scripts as uh, you, yeah, you can detect, detect it. But it's not uh, that, especially for freelancer, I mean, uh, it's not that hard. To, I'm doing this maybe one time a day, I'm clicking through 100 buttons. It's It makes my finger healthy, so why not? Mm -hmm. So we have another question. You have mentioned several times that the most important for the content is to be interesting for the target audience. But could you be more specific? For example, could you tell what kind of content works the best for you and why? <clears throat> um, currently, I'm trying to, uh, to cover uh, one of the most competitive words uh, in, my, uh, in my area. So this is Russian translator. It's really hard. It, it takes a lot of time to prepare relevant content to include only these two words. Uh, I have about uh, 38 or even 40, uh, 40 posts on my main blog, and uh, around uh, around a half of them include this uh, keyword. Uh, and uh, this is. Uh, 
Is it a secret it keyword? I mean, you cannot share it with us? No, I've, I've already told it. Russian translator. Ah, okay. So this Not too specific, keyword. let's say so. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very broad, uh, broad keyword. Uh, but when you're trying to reach the specific audience, for example, in my case, it's, uh, it's uh, mining companies. Mining companies and the engineering companies, maybe some construction companies. You should try to use uh, the so-called uh, long, uh, long tail keywords. For example, uh, a person who is sitting uh, in the mining company and who needs uh, translation uh, may enter uh, English, Russian translation of geological report uh, for something like this. Uh, you can try to find these long-term keywords for your industry. Uh, if you're already working with some uh, some clients, you probably know what they want. Uh, in my case, the uh, mining companies they regularly have mining uh, mining reports uh, and ge ge uh, geological exploration reports. I know that they need translated, uh, and uh, uh, in my Russian blog, I'm trying to cover uh, these long long tail keywords uh, to to attract the attention of potential. Uh, managers who are searching for translators exactly for uh, for this type of content. So if you if you target a specific audience, try to find these long key long tail keywords and write relevant content. And uh, this way, or your potential clients will find you on the web. Of course, it will take more. some time for indexing for content indexing by social or, or by sorry by search engines. I think the question was also about how you actually and decide what content is interesting. And maybe from myself, I can say that yeah. for a mining company, you can find something from the industry and add a sneakly call to action, like looking to, for, looking yeah. to translate yeah. something. But how to do it in, in a general case? I mean, that's a problem kind of, because it's hard to find content that will be both interesting and will somehow induce the person to look into translation services. Yes, it highly depends uh, on the area where you specialize. Uh, for instance, uh, we have another question, and maybe we can uh, okay. combine this, this one and two. Which one um, is it? Uh, which social media pl platforms are the most useful for freelance translator? Oh, yeah. So actually, if we are talking about uh, social media, we shall try to find uh, those social media that are used by our potential clients. Uh, to my best knowledge, in my case, mining companies are not using Facebook at all. <laughs> at least uh, our local Somehow. mining company. Yes, uh, and it's really hard to reach them. Uh, the only way to reach them is uh, a direct contact uh, and uh, probably LinkedIn. I have a couple of connections on LinkedIn from this industry and uh, I can target the content uh, on LinkedIn for them. Um, for example, if you are translating for the tourism industry, uh, tour operators use Instagram and Facebook, Pinterest, and probably Twitter. Uh, these networks offer a great opportunity to attract visitors use, using visual content, such as images and videos. Uh, you can try to find, uh, actually there is a special tool, it is called uh, BuzzFeed or something like this. Oh no, on not BuzzFeed. Sorry, I just forgot about this tool. I will HubSpot. Uh, no, not HubSpot. Uh, this tool helps you to find the most shareable content, the most popular content. Uh, for example, uh, I will I will share uh, a link a bit later. I, I will try to find it. So uh, um, the scheme is as follows. Uh, you are going to uh, attract the attention of uh, tour operators uh, who, who may potentially want to translate their website. You are trying, you're, you shall try to find the best shareable content and rewrite it and uh, ad try to adapt it to, uh, to, your, uh, to your niche uh, and uh, to share it with a link uh, uh, like Sneeply uh, uh, going to your services page. And also, you can uh, try to connect it with the necessity of website translation mm -hmm. at the same time. Yes, Buzz Suma. Uh, I remember that the first word was Buzz, something like this. Mm -hmm. 
So you can share it in <clears throat> in the comments. Yeah, I did. I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, if you are trying to reach software developers, you can also uh, search for the articles related to software localization uh, and write your own article on uh, on the benefits of software localization into your target language. I already have several uh, several blog posts related to uh, website and WordPress localization. Uh, till now, I had a couple of uh, small tasks uh, related to WordPress plugin translation, just uh, through these uh, targeted WordPress related texts on my website. Uh, actually, if you're targeting software developers, you can use Twitter and Facebook. Uh, take a random software company, and I'm sure they have at least a Twitter account. So you can follow them, uh, subscribe to their updates, regularly repost their tweets, and maybe sometime you will see that uh, they are asking for localization services. So maybe you can uh, mention them in your new, uh, in the link to your to your new article, and say that. Uh, this article will probably uh, bring you some new interesting ideas how to improve your uh, you, your soft sales like this. Does and, it really uh, work? I mean, mm, that's what I think mostly people do. Um, are there any more subtle ways to contact? I mean, maybe sharing some article for their interests. Uh, just so maybe translating some article for them. I think I'm just thinking aloud because sometimes when you get a direct ad, you are not that responsive to it. Yes, I, I, I know. Uh, as we, we have already discussed, people don't like when, when they're contacted directly. Uh, oh, sorry, I interrupted you. Yes, people don't like when you're trying to sell something uh, directly, but sometimes that works. <laughs> actually. Uh, now we still have ads. That means they still work, I guess. Uh, and let's take, for example, uh, legal companies. It's a conventional industry, conventional uh, domain of expertise that existed long before internet. And uh, these kind of guys, these kind of people who are running uh, such companies, uh, they tend to, uh, to use more conventional, more professional uh, social networks. Uh, in this case, if, if your target audience are lawyers, law companies, you should definitely try to use LinkedIn more and try to spend more time and more efforts on LinkedIn. Okay, so we have quite a few questions in there, so maybe we can just go through them one by one, top down, um, answering in one minute or so each because we have not that much time left. So the question mm -hmm. is personal versus business account. Is it worth to have both? Uh, yes, it's worth to have to have both accounts, uh, and uh, actually you should have both both of them on Facebook at least. This way you can control your privacy uh, and to separate between business matters and your private matters like friends, family, maybe entertainment, and so on. Uh, and also it depends on the network. Uh, in case of LinkedIn, you can have both professional profile uh, and a, a company page. Actually, your personal profile is already your business profile because it includes information about your experience, achievements, skills, projects, uh, and so on. Uh, as I as I told, or as I already told, if you're going to focus all your attempts on LinkedIn, you should create a page for your company or for your brand. If you are, uh, we it seems to me that uh, we are here freelance translators, but anyway, we should promote our personal brand. That's why we have to create a separate business page. Moreover, um, a separate business page on LinkedIn will give you an opportunity to track your activities better than, uh, than the personal profile. Same as on Facebook. And in case of Twitter, I don't think uh, you need to distinguish between your personal and uh, business profile. But uh, in case if you are a real Twitter lover uh, and you are posting 15 times a day about your daily routine, of course, you should uh, you should create a separate. You said in Facebook, so you meant in Twitter, actually, right? Yes, in Twitter. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Let's if you are on. using several Twitter uh, accounts, you can use Twitter Deck application. It's also developed by Twitter. You can uh, manage several accounts at all, from one place. What's that? 
Yeah, um, Tanya asked, is it water I was drinking because I'm always smiling. Uh, smiling is just a way not to show how, how actually frightened I am to be, to be talking to 85 people at the same time. Mm. I think yes, Simon really feels the same. Probably, okay. uh, uh, like, sorry if we missed some of your comments, some of your questions. It's really hard to concentrate both on the webinar, on the content uh, and on, the, uh, on your comments. We will, uh, we will improve, keep improving. So the next question is, is it worth and practical to have a Facebook page if your company has your own name? Um, as I told, as I already told, it, it is better to, dis to distinguish your personal profile and business page. With a business page, you will be able to create a kind of community around your brand. In yeah. addition, Facebook page offers a set of useful tools for local business. Uh, actually, I, uh, I suggest to, uh, if you're going to create a business page, uh, so you have a, a, set of, um, a set of options, uh, choose local business. In this case, you will have far more uh, features, and analyt both analytical features and uh, other interesting features than in case if you uh, try to use something else. There are about eight or ten different uh, page types. Choose local business. It's an interesting tip. I didn't know there, there are any differences between them. Yes, and of, also uh, Facebook has introduced something really interesting. Uh, if you can uh, switch to my, uh, okay. if, I, if I can share my screen, yeah, I, will, I will show. I will focus on it. Um, I switched to it, but it's, yeah, it's there. It's there, yes? Oh, okay. So here you can you can choose the preset templates. Can you see it? Yeah, I at least can. Mm -hmm. So actually, there are preset templates to, to create uh, various type of content that can be shared. And also, there is an interesting thing. Let me find settings. Go to settings, edit page. Here it is, templates. You can select a template uh, for your for your, uh, Facebook page. Currently, I use professional services, and uh, it's really great exactly for our type of business. And you can also uh, shift tabs. So what is more interesting for, uh, what might be more interesting for your clients. Uh, I choose to show services than about, uh, about me information than post and, and all relevant other things like this so we can get back to okay one second i also want to a bit to focus on what was written in the chat because dmitry was said that you are most you as in simon are mostly writing about translation which is kind of easy for a translator but if your clients are a mining company what do you actually write in your content how do you create relevant content and i think there was uh, one idea from cesar who said that Sorry, I will put my camera back on. Uh, idea from Caesar was, Caesar was to focus on may, mayor industry-related translation issues, issues like post, like why you shouldn't trust Google Translate for the translation of your website. Mm -hmm. And I also yeah, gave my yeah, own yeah. idea that you can, uh, for instance, if you are translating from English to Turkish and you are, your clients are mining, mining companies, you can find something in English about mining translated to Turkish publish on your website. This way, your Turkish clients will find this content both useful and they, they will see that you are a great translator at the same time. So I think it's also a nice hack. I did it and it worked. Well, this is one of, one of interesting approaches. Uh, I've made this thing for uh, several uh, news, uh, news posting companies here. Uh, I've translated news from, uh, from English resources that are relevant to our country and they agreed to include a link to my website uh, and they included a line that uh, this post was translated from English into Russian by this translator. So this is this can also be a good uh, example of how you can spread information, uh, except for talking about just translation. Yeah. Okay, so uh, our time is running out, but at least me, I'm ready to sit until we answer all the questions. Simon, what's about you? Do you, have, do you still have some space time? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, so... We can go. Question. Uh, how to promote yourself via Twitter or Instagram? 
I guess we mm -hmm. talked about Twitter for a while. Maybe you can say something about Instagram and its applicability to translators in general. What can you post there and so on? Uh, so actually, uh, I'm currently I'm using about uh, six or six or even eight eight social social networks. Uh, Instagram is among them. I'm just starting my way in this uh, in this uh, field in this social network. But I'm not sure if my uh, if my target audience uh, is using uh, Instagram at all. Probably maybe some uh, some kind of of magazines. Uh, online shops, basically, maybe uh, photographers or something like this. They can use Instagram. But anyway, I'm trying to spread this content there. Or, uh, as in any content strategy, you should first identify your goal. Who are you going to uh, to find to target that on, on Instagram or on Twitter? If, if your target audience are uh, photographers, as I mentioned, or maybe tour operators, uh, they are also exist on Instagram. You can you can use it. And the best simple uh, the best simple tactics to promote your Twitter or uh, Instagram profiles is to follow other users. That's simple. So just every day you you check check your uh, Instagram or Twitter account. You will see uh, suggestions made by the uh, system. Uh, you follow new people. You can share their content, like, retweet. Uh, you have to show them that you uh, somehow interacted with them, and they will follow you back. This is the initial step you can do when you try to expand your uh, the, the number of followers on your Twitter or Instagram account. But of course, and also, a great content, I think, is a prerequisite. So you cannot just put content, yeah. each of which says that, hey, I'm a great translator, and expect to get a lot of followers mm -hmm. from this. Mm -hmm. yeah, the first step, if you have no, if you, if you no, uh, no followers, a simple way to start is to like and follow other people. Then there are common rules that can be applied to all social networks, including Instagram and Twitter. You can include a link to your social profile in your email signature and uh, ask uh, ask your uh, target audience just to follow you on Twitter or follow follow you on Instagram. Then you can add your social links uh, to to your website. It's uh, it's an obligatory condition. You should you should add this link to your website. Uh, you can invite existing clients uh, to follow your profiles, for example, on Facebook uh, via email newsletter. Uh, for example, uh, you you can send a, send an email saying that I am opening a, a Facebook page where you can find uh, information about special offers, uh, information about maybe discounts, uh, additional. Uh, additional other things related to your translation business, and most probably they will like, they will like your page. Uh, that's what I'm doing for my local, for my local business page. It currently it has more than uh, 1,200 uh, subscribers, so they are very active actually. Uh, but I, I'm using, as I already told, I'm using paid advertising uh, in combination with uh, free, uh, free content promotion methods. And also, you can uh, cross-post invitation on different networks. For example, you you can ask your Twitter followers to join your Facebook page, and ask your Facebook page to join your Twitter, like this. Makes sense. So, what next? Mm -hmm. uh, we had a discussion about buffer in the chat, and also our next question about social media managers. So, which ones would you recommend? Um, Hootsuite is mentioned. Which other suggestions would you have? Mm -hmm. So I have tried Hootsuite uh, and Buffer. I don't want to recommend any other uh, any other manager tools because I haven't checked much of them. I actually uh, stopped at Hootsuite and Buffer. Uh, the first one is really complex uh, tool designed primarily for social media account managers who have uh, hundreds of pages to manage for uh, for different clients. Uh, rather than for an individual use. Uh, so uh, if it makes sense for you, if you are a translation company uh, with maybe several uh, several business pages in different languages, of course it's better to use Hootsuite. If you are a freelance translator, uh, it's better to use Buffer. Of course, Buffer has also special, uh, special plans for business, but uh, currently I'm using uh, a paid plan called 
awesome plan. Awesome, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's awesome. Uh, actually, I don't like Hoot Suite because of because it's overloaded interface, multiple features that I actually don't need. Um, therefore, I decided to stay with Buffer. Uh, it's not it's not very uh, expensive. It's about ten bucks per month. It makes something something around uh, ninety bucks uh, per year if uh, taken into account the uh, discount. Uh, so, but if you have limited budget, if you're just starting, you can use a free version. You can uh, connect five accounts uh, and uh, uh, schedule ten posts. I think three. Uh, ten posts. No, I think three accounts. But three accounts. I'm not sure. I have okay. to double check. But anyway, suggest when you suggest to spend this money on, on the awesome plan because, uh, you know, in Twitter, for instance, statistics show that the best number of tweets per day is fourteen. Actually, fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. That's why if you just have ten posts, you will have to check in twice a day and plan something. And also, maybe some small hack from me is to spend some time during the day specifically for finding, sharing, retweeting content. Because if you are constantly distracted to doing so throughout the day, it can take a lot of time for switching from one task to another. So uh, I, for instance, do it once a day, planning uh, one once every two days, planning somehow 30 posts for Twitter. It mm -hmm. takes me like 40 minutes maybe every two days instead of thinking about it over and over. I don't know, maybe, Simon, you have another approach to this. So I can I can actually show you my content plan. Let us focus on your screen one second. So just I, I have to find it. Mm -hmm. So here it is. Can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have prepared a content plan for a year with major uh, with major uh, events in the industry, and I also prepare a content uh, plan, preliminary content plan for each week. So this line is the week, as you can see, Monday, Tuesday, wow. Wednesday, Thursday. Yes, uh, I try to post at least two, uh, to publish at least two posts every day, but uh, actually I am publishing far more than these two posts. <laughs> uh, I prepare. Uh, uh, as you can see, uh, I, I have some kind of uh, some kind of uh, tips here on the buff. For example, uh, on Monday I post inspirational quotes and curated content. Then on Tuesday uh, I republish my old blog post and, and uh, find some relevant video. Then on Wednesday I'm, I'm trying to post to publish my new post. Uh, then some uh, some question and answers and. Um, I'm going to uh, share some other uh, questions, like what do you like on my to see on my page uh, to interact with the potential customers. On Thursday, uh, I'm publishing tips for clients and also curated content. On Friday, uh, funny pictures and also curated content. Is it for Facebook everything or is it for, for everything? Uh, that's for everything, but I'm trying to customize the post depending on the length. For example, Twitter allows you only 140 uh, symbols, yeah. and other other pages, uh, other uh, social media allows some more space. So, and I'm trying trying to customize these uh, messages for each network. And uh, during the day, uh, so don't don't switch off my I won't. screen. I show another thing. So when you when you switch to a uh, paid plan on plan on buffer, uh, so you can see. A new tab. It's an. It, it is called content box. Content inbox. Uh, let me check. So it's loading. Uh, here you can uh, find RSS RSS links from the most interesting uh, blogs. For instance, here I have five blogs, uh, like the Open Mic, uh, then Lingua Greca. And uh, something from uh, thoughts on translation and so on. And uh, as you can see here, uh, there is a, a there are blog updates. You can choose the content from here and add to your uh, social networks like this. You can uh, customize uh, the message almost for every 
network and add to queue uh, to share it somewhere uh, somewhere on your content calendar like this so it's very helpful and uh, it takes not so much time actually uh, it takes me about uh, two hours to create a weekly content plan I, I'm doing it uh, on Mondays and uh, till now it works great and I'm go uh, I'm already experienced some uh, good good growth of traffic you can see it from my Twitter analytics so actually there are more there are 98 percent more tweets more Twitter impressions that means 35 thousand people could potentially see my tweets and you you can see this pro a lot of profile visits mentions and followers so um, buffer definitely worth those money spent for it so okay uh, that's all that I would like to share today let me hide your screen we because we made this poll about what uh, social media are most interesting for our viewers and they respond uh, that LinkedIn is most interesting for them and we have a question uh, what is the best way to use LinkedIn for a translator and is it uh, have you found any actually found any translation jobs from LinkedIn because I also did a small um, not actually a poll but actually a uh, question in one of Facebook groups asking if people have found any jobs for yeah. LinkedIn and yeah. uh, the responses were controversial so what's your opinion uh, I also seen this uh, this poll it seems to me that it was on the Russian translation group oh maybe there were a lot of mine but anyway yeah. Yes, there were a lot of different opinions. Some, someone says that uh, it's a complete waste of time, and other people say that, oh, I've got so many connections with uh, high-end clients. But actually, I didn't spend much much time on my uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, I regularly post uh, content. Uh, I have filled in all the uh, all the profile tabs, mm, so I ha I have uh, a lot of. Uh, endorsement for different skills i have several uh testimonials from my clients and actually uh, i'm not trying to reach new clients on linkedin yet uh, it is planned for for uh, for the springtime i i have a uh, i have a plan to uh start using link linkedin more uh actively uh but till now or uh, since the first day when i registered i've got about five or six contacts and uh, they were just single-time translation projects. So currently, I see LinkedIn as a useful tool to communicate with translators, basically. I think there it's are, overly formal, yeah. also, LinkedIn. Yes, there are many translator groups. There are really interesting uh, discussions. So you can learn many new things from your colleagues. And uh, in, this, uh, in this framework, uh, from this point of view, LinkedIn is very useful. Yeah, I also think that the fact that there are so many customers on LinkedIn also makes it harder to actually reach them because everyone tries that. So if you are doing this, I suggest that you be creative. Do something different from just sending a message say, saying how great a translator you are. Invent something. Mm -hmm. I'd say that that would be my advice. So, uh, yes. yeah. Even a topic for a new webinar because we, we just can't, uh, can't cover yeah, everything sure. yet. The approach is for outbound marketing. Yes. 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 Maybe we can host another webinar on this. Before we leave, there are some questions that I didn't quite understand. I want to stop on on some of them. We were, were already answered. Sorry, I will, will not come back to them because uh, we can watch it in the replay. Um, I liked this one. This one is WordPress blogging platform, a good social media for a translator. Uh, well, not exactly a blogging platform, but maybe you can also say a few words about wh which, which platform to use for a blog, because there are different. So it depends. There are two versions of WordPress. There is WordPress.org and WordPress.com. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the question is about WordPress.com. Yes, this is the, uh, this is the blogging, blogging platform. Uh, you, you actually can use it to host your blog only. And uh, if you're going to uh, create a business website, it is better to use uh, a self-hosted website using WordPress. Uh, then you should go to WordPress.com and download a special, um, a special zip file with 
uh, with this uh, content management system. Then you have to purchase hosting and install it on your hosting. But uh, you can you can still use WordPress.com as a free uh, blogging platform if you don't want to spend uh, for some reason if you don't want to invest money in your translation business you can start with WordPress.com and uh, when you sorry uh, sorry I interrupted you yeah please finish. no it's okay um, mm. and then you can shift to to your self-hosted website it it is easily it is it can be easily done when you when you get uh, enough money to launch it actually it's not not so expensive so but if you for, for some reason you choose free versions you can you can start with wordpress.com i think uh, also from the cloud platforms you definitely should take a look into the openmic.co i don't know if dmitry yeah. kornikov is still with us but it's actually a blogging platform built around translators where a lot of translators reside and also hopefully in some time clients will also start coming there that's Dimitri's plans as far as I know yeah, they do. definitely do check it out the open mic dot co not com but co and also if you are want to try your try what you are capable of write to me because we at SmartCat are looking for people to write to our blog so I would love to see what you're up to we can publish it in our blog as well and um, also, you can uh, if you are going to uh, promote your content. If if you want to uh, to write articles, you can also contact me. Uh, I'm going to launch uh, a free uh, guest blogging uh, section on my website, so you are free to offer your uh, suggestions, your topics. I will consider them if they relate to freelance translation business somehow. Uh, I will post it with a link to your social media profiles and to your website. It will uh, bring you some, maybe several several uh, dozens of new visitors to your website. And also okay. a backlink, which is good for CEO search yeah. engine optimization. Oh, uh, well, okay. Can we add something? Maybe also this one, um, Fabio asks, does it make sense to have more pages for each specialization? For instance, why didn't you create a page called Russian Mining Translator? How narrow should the uh, specialization be? It, it depends upon your choice. Actually, uh, I'm trying to re reach clients uh, beyond mining sphere. Uh, I'm translating uh, also for law companies and for uh, software companies. I have actually uh, three companies uh, developing software for US, but they are based in Kyrgyzstan, and uh, they all uh, they need to translate uh, many things from English into Russian, and uh, therefore I I don't think it is a good idea to over specialize just to create a, a mining translation mining translator uh, special page for mining translation. But of course, if you if you translate only for mining, uh, feel free to to create this page and uh, target target at this particular uh, audience. You will get better results, and you will get these results faster uh, than I get results from my uh, page where I target lawyers, miners, uh, engineers, and so on. All right, so. Um, I'm afraid we don't have time to answer all the other questions. Uh, I will try to write something of a summary post with key takeaways. If I notice that we meet some interesting questions, I will put them there. We will also discuss with Simon what to write there, so he will not be left unattended. Uh, thanks for coming. Maybe, Simon, do you want to wrap it up with some general message about what should we do on social media in one minute? Uh, first of all, thank you so much uh, that you joined our webinar. I didn't expect that so many people, uh, so many awesome translators will join us today. Thank you all. Uh, and uh, I would like to say that uh, the main, uh, the main uh, idea in, uh, in social mar media marketing and in business, in marketing in general, uh, is to uh, consistently follow your dream, follow your plan and follow your goal. Uh, if you have a plan, and you implement it, you will definitely reach, someday you will definitely reach uh, your destination point and uh, you will uh, become a better translator, better known translator and you promote your services on the entire web. Just keep 
uh, keep consistent, be consistent with your effort. Yeah, focus. And, uh, uh, and uh, never give up. <laughs> yes, and uh, from myself, I will add that on social media, it's easy to get addicted and to start doing a lot of things at the same time, uh, which actually bring no result. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. So try always, as Simon said, to remember your goal and to focus on it, not to get dissipated too much. And um, maybe then we can el uh, uh, end this and this webinar. Thanks once once more for coming. The recording will be available at this same link. I will also upload it to YouTube, to YouTube sometime later, and we will also write a wrap up article with the most interesting questions. And then yes, I can also the textual version will be available on successfulfreelancertranslator.com soon. Okay, that's even better. So then uh, once more sponsor message, not actually sponsor, but host message, check out SmartCat if you haven't yet. The button is under the, under the video box. And uh, see you next Thursday. Make sure to check out our other webinars. Next Thursday, we will be talking to Cherry Place about coming, uh, about going from freelancers to entrepreneurs. And we will be talking how can you as a freelancer become an agency in a sense. So make sure not to miss it. Check out, click on my profile, Smart Cut Academy, our profile, check all the other webinars and see you soon. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now I just have to find where to end this webinar. Mm -hmm. I still haven't found the quick way to do it so it doesn't sound as as powerful as it should be. Uh, while the people are leaving, I will be looking for this. Okay, I found the button stop broadcast. Let me try once again. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Make sure to come back next Thursday. Thursday, we will be here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.